Well, I don't think it is. I, to me, to me, uh, the way how I read the situation as of this moment, I can clearly see that both sides are committed not to take the escalation phase further upwards. I think there's been very proportionate way how both sides acted given the animosity, given the level of strategic tension, given the history and the current state of affairs between Israel and the Palestinians, the situation in Syria, Lebanon, uh, Iranian proxies, that's a reference, uh, the situation in Yemen and, 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 and so on. Because after the, uh, after the Iranians uh, carried out this massive attack on Israel, which was also very select in what they wanted to strike so clearly, they didn't want to cause any significant damage. They just wanted to show that they can do it. They kind of drew the line and simply said, we are satisfied, we responded to an attack on our diplomatic establishment in Damascus. Uh, we, we kind of call it quits. The Israelis obviously were compelled to counteract. And I think both sides were also, their actions were driven by the domestic sentiment because obviously the Iranians wanted the response to the killing of their, of their senior defense uh, general from, uh, from the Islamic Revolutionary Corps. Uh, the, the, the Israelis also wanted a response after seeing these armies of drones and missiles pondering their skies. So the governments were compelled to act, but clearly they don't really want to see escalation. The fact that no damage was reported about uh, with regards to the energy infrastructure is an indication that I think the White House was, uh, was making it very clear to the Israelis, just like they tried to make it very clear to the Ukrainians, they don't want to see a hike in, in, in the prices of energy resources yeah. because everyone would start feeling nervous. Iran is one of the major exporters of energy resources. So any sign that that flow may be disrupted would sure. obviously cause a bit, of, a bit of a panic. So I think everyone, uh, so of both sides involved in the conflict, I think try to contain Alexei. the level of violence they continue to commit. Yeah, Alexei, I mean, does this return to a proxy war then, do you think? Is that, is that your, your supposition from this? After this, it just returns to the proxy wars we have seen? Yes, I don't think there's going to be a de-escalation in terms of tensions between the Iranians and the Israelis because there is still too much at stake. But the return to the proxy confrontation is something that uh, I think both sides feel more comfortable about, and, and, and that would be... Uh, my, my predicament, having said that, we're still in this ambiguity phase where anything can, can become a trigger for a further escalation, whether it's an action by the third side or someone misinterprets the intention of the other side. Even the, the, the statement that came out of Israel that I'm familiar with when they made a reference to a scale crowd in, in terms of the attack. So they didn't formally confirm we were behind it, but they did not also deny any involvement. And that sense of ambiguity still leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So it's almost, it's almost. I think both sides are very clear, uh, are very desperate not to come out weak here or under Alexi. under strong in 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 the state of confrontation. But that obviously creates this uh, continuous uh, degree of tension. Uh, but if if sure. nothing will happen um, in, in the next say forty eight to seventy two hours, then we can talk about gradual quiet de-escalation without is, normal, no, no one formally admitting.